All right, here we go. What, what episode are we on? 36. Hey, welcome to the FanCast, episode 36. I am your host, Brain Muffin the Lifting Nerd, and with me on the line, driving out in the high desert of Cal, I phone IA, is Eric Ward. What is up, Brain? Howdy, man. And uh, Liquid Metal Pro may or may not be uh, joining us. He, he Apparently, he got up from his siesta and is kind of groggy, but he's going to let me know. He's picky. He's picky. He's either picking his nose or picking fruit or maybe both. He's picking his nose with the fruit. So Eric and I, while waiting for LMP, we're having a great discussion, and we're going to try and rewind a little bit because this is something y'all would probably want to. So as I listened to uh, episode 120 uh, this morning on uh, WCBS, and they were covering Avengers Infinity War, or Infinitely War as I keep calling it, uh, it occurred to me, uh, you know, that so far there's nothing from what they've said that makes me want to see this movie. Um, I do see in the comments uh, people disagree, and that's great. Um, some people are disagreeing in very petty ways and some have actual arguments and I can't wait. I would love to see if we get some kind of debate back and forth on that. Um, you know, Kendo re-evaluated his favorite list and he put this one at the top. However, I will say this, and I noticed this in Jeff with about 40 minutes to go in the episode, the more he talked about it, the less excited he got. So, uh, I, 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 I parallel this with the way he, they were about Rogue One. Uh, the other movie, you know, uh, The Force Awakens was so bad that Rogue One looked so good, but then in hindsight it didn't look that good. Now we'll see if something similar, I'm not going to say Jeff is going to say uh, suddenly say, oh, you know, Infinity War was horrible, but they may not think as highly of it. So uh, what I realized today, and this is just kind of, I'm trying to recap it a little bit here. We were discussing this stuff, and I'm trying to get back to where we were. Uh, I was explaining to somebody today, I realized that I'm not in superhero fatigue like I thought. What I'm in is I'm in Marvel Cinematic Universe fatigue. And I have been in that funk basically since Iron Man 3. And uh, with the exception of Doctor Strange, which almost lifted me out, I've been stuck in this. And uh, Thor 2, I did not see in theaters. Iron Man 3 is the last one I saw in theaters of any of the the Marvel movies. Um, Saw Thor 2 on video. I don't even remember if I finished it. It was so bad. Um, you know, I, I got the video from Netflix or streaming. I don't remember if I got the DVD or was streaming. Uh, I started watching it and went, God, this is so horrible. Uh, I may have packed it in. I don't remember. So obviously it was, you know, it was memorable for me. And then, um, you know, Ant-Man and Civil, when I, Civil War and Winter Soldier I eventually saw somewhat recently. Uh, Winter Soldier, I did try to watch it when my son was had it rented from the video store up the street. And five minutes is all I could stand, and it was so bad um, in every way, shape, and form. The dialogue was bad. The fight scenes were absolutely horrendous. And uh, it was like, I, I don't care. This is too boring. I'm going on with my life. So... Um, Anyway, so we'll see if LMP will join us here very briefly. But yeah, we got some. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, throw him a treat. <laughs> throw him a treat. Good dogs. <laughs> Sick them. Get them, boys. <laughs> Whoever brings me back his foot, it's got extra treats. <laughs> so I, I find uh, that Deadpool. I'm actually excited for. Um, that looks awesome. It looks good. We'll see if they you know, see. You like the X Men movies? By the the second one, the last one I did. I watch any of those in theater? I don't remember now. The last one I saw was like, oh God, I think it was X Men Apocalypse. And God, it was horrible. Yeah. Well, which one was it that had Jean Grey or had Magneto lifting up the Golden Gate Bridge? That was, was that the third. The one? last stand. That was the last stand. Yeah. That's the that last. That was the Brett Ratner directed version, which was pretty much a heaping pile of shit. Yeah, that may have been the last one that I actually saw because I didn't care anymore. Um, but see, I, I look back, you know, obviously, uh, hey, look, I'm on a pro just joined. All right. Hey. Sorry, how gentlemen. How are those strawberries doing? 
Uh, the ones that I'm eating off some naked chick or the ones that no, I the one, stole? No, 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 the, what, no, the ones you've, you've been picking. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> well, I wouldn't know. Apparently, um, you can't really be gay in Mexico. They, they kind of <laughs> kill you for that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, man, but, yeah, but as long as you pick, I don't think they care if you're gay. Well... <laughs> Well, to be, I mean, you name me a gay Mexican. Do you want me to Google that? Oh, God, no. <laughs> Male or female? Uh, okay, first of all, if it's female... You know, that, that is a really good question, dude. That exactly, really right? good question. Who's an hourly gay Mexican in popular culture? Um, If we're... If, if, uh, maybe I'm just throwing a random theory out there. I don't know, maybe one of these days. Huh? I think you stumped us on that one. Here we go. Ninas Dios, Mexico's first openly no, gay hey. female hip-hop artist. Even oh, please, is, that doesn't count. Rick, hey, Ricky Martin, he's gay. <laughs> is he from Mexico? Hey, Mexican. Yeah, he's gay now. He's a fudgebacker. Yeah, but he's not... He's not Mexican. He's he's not even. He's I don't even brown. know we can classify he's, him as a stick. He's brown. It uh, doesn't matter. Yeah, it does matter. <laughs> I don't think it matters. No, no. Okay, first of all, it's not that he's brown because you you have brown people out there that aren't sticks. But it's I'm just, just saying, like, in, just like, like Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese, you're all slant eyes. It's the same. Uh, oh, he's from Puerto Rico. <laughs> Puerto Rico. Yeah, so he's out in the in the water. He's still a Mexican. No. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Aren't you still blaming Trump for um for their bad conditions? Who? Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico. like this. Oh, like, uh, poor us. I'm like, Jesus, you get uh, most funding that uh, most other countries would kill for. Like, come on, relax. No, but I tell you what. Don't say the name Clinton in Haiti. You might get gutted oh, right, yeah, right yeah. on the He's spot. <laughs> that, 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 the good old Clinton Foundation. Yeah, I don't care what color you are. You say Clinton, you know, I'm from, I work with Bill Nothing Clinton. like good old money laundering, you know. Oh. Well, she was, you know, we had gun running in Libya. That's why we had to have people die over. And ironically enough, well, it's... when she lost so let's the see, election, which is... the, Clinton, the Clinton Foundation shut down. Yeah. Can't imagine why. Hmm. So, it LMP, we, to... we, we, were ta we were talking about superhero movies. <laughs> So, uh, which is funny because I wasn't really going to talk about anything tonight because I had no idea what to talk about. So you guys actually threw something my way. Yeah. So uh, Eric hasn't seen it. I haven't seen it. I highly doubt I will. Um, I'm seeing it Sunday. So I, I told him I would rant, but I would keep it spoiler free. Okay. Yeah, so uh, have you seen it yet, LMP? I'm actually going to watch it in the morning. All right. Yeah. So. Um, well, make make sure make sure that you uh, you don't uh, don't have too much fun. Right? Oh God! Please don't listen. Uh, what's going uh, earlier today? Um, WWE had like their greatest Royal Rumble pay per view. From what I understand, it was kind of disappointing. But Jesus, at work, people were spoiling that whole thing for me, playing it in the background. I was like. When you people keep it down, so I don't have to hear people telling me put headphones on. I was like, yeah, I, I would love to, to, to shove these headphones down your throat. But what was also pissing me off was that I could barely go online anywhere without um anything remotely close to spoiling Avengers. So I, I know. I've, I been, did, I've been staying offline all fucking day. And it's just kind of like that, really hard. Because be, I've been wanting to troll people all day and I couldn't do it. I'm like, damn. You're sapping me of the of my uh, my ability to troll people, just post offensive content online for the fun of it, uh, with people spoiling it. It's like they found a way to keep me off the internet. So I hope that changes by tomorrow morning, uh, well afternoons, because I'm going in the morning matinee. I'm gonna see it in 3D for uh, actually less than the price I would pay to see it on regular price ticket. Believe it or not, hey, here in the city. LMP, there's a question for yeah. you. Do Mexicans pay full price for movie tickets, or do they just go to matinees? Well, we get to watch the movie credits for free. <laughs> <laughs> Just curious. Uh, it's a valid question. Um, you, you name, okay, first of all, 
you name me a you name me an instance where you see uh, a crowded uh, theater full of Mexicans. Well, out here in California, that's because you people are everywhere. Well, no shit. If, if we're everywhere, we're bound to fill a theater at some point. Hey, Gringo, that's and northern no. Mexico, not California. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, actually, not even not even northern Mexico. It might uh, might be uh, separate Californias, and for all we know, in a couple months. Yeah. Some. So all I can say is, you Californians, get on it already. Split into three states. Oh, oh don't worry. You guys can build a wall if you want. I still want to build a wall. Uh oh, did Eric cut out? Uh, I think somebody built the wall around his signal. Or Chipotle, oh, one of the two. Oh, oh well. Oh, the dogs are running amok again. Can you guys hear me? Yep, sort of. Oh, the Chipotle's back. He ain't that far yet. I could only imagine. Um, I could only imagine Eric if there was like an actual war and he was in battle. Like halfway through the like the important parts of the uh, of the battle, he will like bait in and out. <laughs> Just ran. <laughs> yeah. What about now? <laughs> okay, that's better. Can you guys hear me now? Yep. Can you hear my dogs barking? Hey, LMP. LMP, yeah. before I got cut off, I was telling you, speaking of Mexicans, seeing that seems to be our current topic, do you know there was a Mexican superhero in the 80s in DC Comics? Um, I think there was a few Mexican heroes. Was, didn't Marvel even have like a Mexican at some point? I'm not sure about Marvel, but uh, there actually was a Mexican superhero called El Diablo. Like it hit like in 89. I think it lasted less than like 20 issues. But there was a Mexican superhero. I'm pretty sure. Um, I remember Marvel had something where they did an animated... I do remember they did an animated movie. It was like in the 2000s where, where it featured... Well, the Valorama is the voice of a character who was like a skateboarding kid, okay. and Stanley made a cameo in it. I do remember that. I think it was called like The Vulture or something. Hmm. You know, the guy was Mexican, but I I don't ever recall the Vulture ever being part of the Avengers, so it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of the Marvel Universe. Well, check out El Diablo if you even get a chance. Make you feel good. Well, that sounds like a badass name. He was like a lawyer by day and a Mexican, you know, crime fighter by night. Hmm. So does he toss people over the wall, or <laughs> how does that work? I think let me what he tosses or maybe off buildings, <laughs> not over walls. Can Can you imagine that? Like you're a Mexican <laughs> crime fighter. Like you, okay, you're you're wait that that sounds like you're fighting Mexicans, Mexican crime fighter. Wouldn't it be a crime fighting Mexican? Because you're fighting crime, but you just happen to be Mexican. Whereas you're a Mexican crime fighter, that can also imply that you're crime fi you're, you're fighting Mexicans. God, it, it, it takes me back to that South Park episode where they were debating pirate ghosts and ghost pirates. You guys ever seen that one? No, man, I haven't seen South Park since I don't even know how many, like season six or something. That was like season three or four or something like that it was an early season oh like, well you it was when they... me to remember that far oh. back in time <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah I'm, I'm apparently i'm old now um which is funny because that episode featured corn also oh no um, yeah that one i remember that i remember yeah and, and they they had remember it was a pirate ghost and it's like no 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 they were ghost pirates they're ghost pirates they were pirates that became ghosts no no no, no. they were pirates that um they they were ghosts that they become pirates, like back and forth about it. And I was, and I still remember the running gag. Um, like they really were trying to prove which one of the two they were. And I think in the end, like they, there was no solution for it. Um, I think the punchline was something about corn turning into corn products, like popcorn, <laughs> okay. corn on a cob, corn butter, corn oil. Yeah, yeah, okay. That I, I remember that part, but yeah, and the dogs are. And, uh, Oh, they like South Park, apparently. 
or the early episodes at least. Yeah. Well, hey. Now, if anybody's listening, they'll be like, are they ever going to get back to the topic that we're talking about before they start doing this other stuff? I, I don't know. Oh, please. Who listens to this show? Well, I, um, nobody. So, uh, well, Jeff does when he's getting a, doing his workout. So, Jeff, um, come on. F- four sets of five deadlifts. Let's go. Start at uh, 185, work up to 275. Uh, now the dogs have brought all their toys down here. It's about to get really noisy. <laughs> well... Um, so what were you guys talking about? You were talking about superhero movies. Yeah, I was saying how I was burnt out on, on this stuff and that Marvel for the MCU has like three different scripts. So, well, I was also saying well, that you could do a, a, a drinking game with the, the superhero tropes. Just list them all out and then start watching the Marvel movies and see when you pass out because they're all in there and some of them have the same trope five or six times. So even Elliot hmm. agrees. That would actually be an interesting drinking game. I mean, your dog, for some reason, agrees with you. Oh, no. Eric, hey, guys, you hit video. Great. I got to see his face for once. Yeah, you get oh. a lot of air noise from you, Eric. Uh, hang on. Um... So, what do I have to say about the, um, the superhero movies? Uh, oh, sorry about that. Shit. Um, all I'm going to say is, is we get a movie for, if we get a movie for Riri Williams, uh, I'm done. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. And, and I made the comment uh, on the fan book page um about you know anything and i didn't say what you know who if anybody's dead or whatever but i really believe that they're just going to reset there might be a couple of characters that get lost in the shuffle um between now and the the, when the whole thing ends the end of infinite infinity war whatever that's going to be called um but we already know that certain characters are going to survive because there's already movies scheduled featuring them so uh in my view that's kind of a giveaway The, the ones that we don't know for certain Really, as far as the main characters are, obviously Thor, um, Iron Man, you know Tony Stark, and uh, Captain America. Um, well, I heard that um, that they're going to be implementing time travel in the fourth movie. Oh yeah, yeah, and they even mentioned that, and that's how they're going to. Yeah. You know, we don't know if we're going to get another Doctor Strange movie. Obviously, Ant Man, uh, you know, and the Wasp. There's another that one's coming out. What in three months? Yeah, and, so I think it's July. I think. Yeah. So. Um, to me, there's because of what they've already announced, any stakes that are seen in this movie to me are are just playing with your emotions because, you know, Robert Downey Jr. is getting a little old to play Iron Man, um, so you could either have him die or pass the mantle on to someone else. Tom Holland, we know, has got what you know. Sony has what three more Spider-Man movies already announced. So, you know, he's yeah, not going to be reset, you know, crank that shit out. Yeah. So to me, um, because of what we know outside of these other characters, going to be a Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So we know that at least some of those pe- some of those characters, I mean, doesn't mean they're all going to survive, but the main ones are probably going to survive. Um, oh, God. And that kill Batista. And then so what what you know is uh, and, you know, if they they do kill off some characters, and like the Captain Marvel and some other movies, these even lesser known characters, if those movies tank, they're going to take that time travel thing and, and warp it back in and bring these characters back. So to me, all of the stakes that Infinity War uh, demonstrates has null and void because uh, Marvel and Disney, but basically Marvel, uh, have already ruined it. They've already since they've already announced stuff, and some of it, you know, okay. If Captain America and Iron Man don't make it out of this when it's all said and done, well, there's what three, four Captain America movies, three Iron Man movies, four if you count, you know, Homecoming as uh, Kendo does. And so, to me, it's just it's just they're just trying to tug on heartstrings, but it's it's uh, undeserved, and that's oh. part of my rant that I you know. Because I understand this is darker, and they've even said, you know, don't get too attached to characters and all that. You know, so, um, not Sony, Marvel said that all going along. But we know they're going to reset it, and when 
it gets too bad, they'll just hit the full reset button and start all over again, and we'll get Iron Man 1 with someone else being Tony Stark. Or Riri. Well, what I think is going to happen is, and again, I don't know because I've tried to read as little as possible, but I think in this movie they're basically going to get their asses kicked. I think maybe only a handful of characters will survive at the end, and that's where I think they're going to leave it. And then I think they're going to go back in time, probably using the time stone, and they're going to, you know, obviously try to prevent, you know, you know, the end of the world essentially. Right. First of all, that first of all, that statement that they're making that um, don't become too attached to these characters is total complete bull. Because part of the thing, first of all, Marvel's doing the very same thing that they're then telling their fan audience not to do, um, and that's they're catering to the vocal minority with all these um, token roles. Like, uh, like, look at what with um. If if you talk about don't get attached to these characters, why didn't they tell that to the people who made Black Panther a fucking movement? Obviously, they don't have the guts to tell them because they know that's not the politically correct answer. So that's the first thing I got to say about that statement. As far as what I think this movie, is, what they're gonna do with these movies going forward, part of me, part of me really wishes that when this whole superhero movie craze had um, started becoming a thing. That they never had announced all these movies ahead of time. Like they should have just like maybe announced it. I would say maybe when it was like months away from debuting or something like drop a teaser trailer and leave it at that. Um, yeah, I know we have. I mean, I know they have to generate hype, which is why they put out these news articles and everything like that. But I kind of wish at times they would just keep it on the wraps until they were like close to the end of production. So they would bring that surprise factor back. Like, like oh shit, I didn't know we were going to get this coming out. Um, by them saying, oh hey, we're we're due to have this movie out in the next like two, three years. It, yeah, it, it generates a little bit of curiosity, but at the same time it's like when you put a timeline like all these movies going forward, and then you start doing things like this, like with Infinity War, it, like you said, Brian, it, it kind of spoils the story for you. And the like, problem already... now, too, with, with the, you know, with yeah. But the internet, nothing is nothing is sacred anymore, man. You can't keep anything, anything secret anymore. It's impossible. Well, I'm still waiting for the next happening to happen, but um, they've been a little lazy with it lately. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, part of it too that was last night. Um, you know, they were live streaming. I mean, I didn't listen to it last night. I listened to it this morning. But some people were asking things about: you know, is the X Men in it? Does this happen? Is well, you know that these characters aren't going to be in it because, you know, X-Men is owned by a different company. Um, and I know some of that is, is 20th Century Fox, or just I guess they're just now Fox Entertainment. But, you know, that deal hasn't finished going through. And, and, it, might, and it might not go through. And it might not go through. And, you know, Sony and Marvel, obviously, have got something in Disney. have got something worked out why they can even get Spider-Man in those movies. Um, but, like I said, you know, it's... Who knows what they're going to do with the next movie? Uh, I would not be surprised. Now here's what, here's now here's a here's where I'm kind of I'm going to flip the coin over in my own rant and kind of rant against myself. But let's say okay. that some of these A-list characters do bite the dust at the end of it all, not necessarily at the end of this movie, but in the end when in whatever the follow-up because I believe it's supposed to be a two-parter, whatever that second part's called when it's yes. said and done. If there are some that have, I mean, truly bit the dust, not got so injured they're going to retire or they're going to train someone to replace them or something like that, they're gone. Um, it wouldn't surprise me then if that's the path in this next, the second movie, we're going to start to see uh, characters that um, we don't even know who they really are with no real backstory to see if they can take up the mantle. We kind of get this with Captain Marvel. Um, you know, we know that they're filming an origin story that's going to take place. Uh, I guess it's coming out next year, but apparently it takes place in the nineties. Uh, part yeah. of her story is that she gets now the character is, um, it's not Jubilee. It's rogue of the X-Men touches her, steals her powers and puts her in a coma for 25 years. That probably is not going to happen, but you never know, right? They might have an under the table deal just with that character or with that actress. Um, and they're keeping it secret. I mean, we never know, but like you said, Eric, you know, with the internet, all it takes is one photo. And if Anna yep. 
Paula Quinn or whatever her name is is you know seen on screen or on set they'll think that that she's doing it but um, but apparently she's gonna be put into a coma and you know wake up because apparently you know there's a tie-in with the next uh, movie with her um, so but you know you're talking you know when I think you know when I heard you know I didn't even realize that there was a Captain Marvel with Marvel until maybe a couple years ago because to me Captain Marvel was um, Shazam. Well, he says Shazam to turn into Captain Marvel, and that's a DC character, and that's the older character. Um, so, you know, we're getting down into the the C minus list of characters. I don't think they're going to be able to carry these big movies. I really, if they try and recast, let's say that Tony Stark, um, you know, Robert Downey Jr. Getting, I mean, he's got to be in his fifties because he's older than I am. And yeah, he's in his 50s. He pa- let's say he passes the mantle on. Let's say that that happens and we get like an Iron Man 4 where he's passing on to somebody just for shits and giggles here. Unless that is a big star that can carry that. Because in my view, he's been carrying this entire effort. Uh, I mean, you know, Chris um, Amesworth and uh, who's the guy that plays Captain America? Um, Chris Evans. Chris Evans. They've kind of helped a little bit. But I think if Iron Man 1 doesn't do well, we don't have any of this. Oh, no. Hell no. And, uh, no. you know, it's it's one of those things where it's, um, you know, his charisma, I won't necessarily his acting ability, but I think it's his charisma. It's almost like he's playing himself, <laughs> you know, uh, has pulled this whole. He is in a way. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think he is in many ways, Tony Stark, the, at least the flamboyant. Uh, Playboy. Yeah, in, the, in the comics, he wasn't a snarky smartass. He, he was just a suave, sophisticated billionaire. Right. Cool. So you know that, what's that great? yeah, um, that kind of settles into it. But I think he, you know it, it helps pull it along. And I don't if you don't have that. And I know that there's supposedly there's a phase three and phase four. You know what it feels like to me is there's another phase as long as the current phase is doing well. So there was probably a phase one and a phase two. Three. Yeah, if it does well. You know? Right. I think we're at the end of three now, or almost at the end of three. I think yeah, I don't even know. Of, we're at the end. Of, we're getting in, like towards the back, right. the back end of three. So if four is these lesser known characters, so we get um, Ant Man, Captain three, Marvel, Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange, Ant Man, Doctor Doctor Strange, and Black Panther second movies, uh, without the Avengers, without an Iron Man or something. I don't think it's going to do as well. I think it'll still do okay. Uh, but the thing that that really, if if let's say Ant Man two, Ant Man and the Wasp doesn't do as well, um, then your next movie may only have a budget of one hundred fifty million, and then it's going to start to show. I mean, to me, like some of the the clips I've seen of Black Panther look horrible. To me, the Civil War, the whole everything looked. I mean, I, I know when it was CGI, almost all of it was. I mean, the, the big fight scene, they all run at each other in a big empty parking lot. Um, almost <laughs> everything that, they didn't do any wire fighting. Um, anytime that wasn't was, a real airport? Right. No way, Brian. <laughs> well, even though the when Chris Evans is, um, he's pulling the helicopter for, from flying mm-hmm. away, that whole thing is CGI. He's not even... I saw he's actually on a, a, a thing that's green that they filled in as white. If he fell off, he might fall six inches. So it's not even like he was raised up on something like in the old ways of filming where, you know, they put mats down or mattresses or something. So if actors fell, they would fall maybe 10 feet or something, but then hit something soft. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so much of what they do is there's it, it, it's sometimes it's done very very well, but as I've said many times, they have enough experience with 3D modeling and rendering that it's really easy for me to spot, um, 98% of the time. So I have a question for you. Are you at Chipotle um, now? Yes, sir. And seeing that we're on the uh, subject of the uh, of Infinity War. There's a movie theater in the same parking lot, and it is fucking packed. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. This thing's going to blow two million. Two billion. Oh, of course. Well, uh, as long as it takes the record away from Whack Panther. Anyways. 
Yeah, go ahead. I was going to ask you. Um, so talking about the CGI moments, right? Uh, in Civil War, do you think the moments where they had like all buddy buddy um buddy buddy boyfriend boyfriend type of moments were those CGI too? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hey, they, I, I have hey, to read the contracts. They were, hey, they, were, they were bonding, man. Yeah. See, that's, well, that's now, the way buddy. I look at it. See, now, here, now here's something, without spoiling anything, here's something that does not happen in the first five minutes, and it really, really, really pisses me off. Because the more I've thought about Civil War, they're both wrong, but Captain America is the most wrong. And I really wanted Thanos to rip that um, fake arm off of, of uh, Bucky. Bucky? hit his head into orbit or into a bazillion, like just have his head just splatter like it's a slasher flick. And then when his, when, when Cap sees his lever go down, he, he basically jumps at, at Thanos and Thanos rams the arm through his heart, literally ripping his heart out. And, and that's the end of both of them. And they're both gone forever. Because you have a, a fugitive who's responsible for billions of dollars worth of damage and thousands of people being killed as well as a hero uh, uh, you know, who goes in blazing, um, guns blazing, doesn't think about what he's doing. Again, billions of dollars of damage. And we've got, all of them are killing innocent people on both sides. This is where I say both Tony and Captain are wrong. But I'm far more irritated at him because he, he refuses to take responsibility. So, well, that's kind of like how it plays out in the comics too, um, for the most part. They were both always causing a lot of damage, but it's not really towards the end of the comic that Captain realizes just exactly how far he took it, and um, and how he was really in the wrong as well. Like he was will, he was even willing to kill Tony Stark over it. Yeah, like that. That was like one of the like if you would if you ever needed a heel turn for Captain America, it was that moment. Yeah, uh, the moment in the in that comic. Hell, you could even uh, say that he really went heelish even early on. Uh, when he let Punisher join their ranks. While I say it's not necessarily the um, the worst decision that he made in his life, I mean, listen, if Punisher, regardless of what the Marvel heroes think about him, he still kind of steers him more to the side of justice. It's just that he operates outside the law. Um, the reasons why he chose Punisher were very questionable. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Captain was in the wrong in the, in the movie as well in the comics. And I would definitely say the the way you look at it, you c- could make the argument that he was in many ways worse than Tony Stark was in the movie. Yeah. And, and, and it almost sounds like they kind of flipped that around between the movie. But that was one of the things when they had that argument, Tony was like, he didn't like the concept of registering with the government, but he knew something had to be done because they were so fixated on uh, stopping whatever that they weren't w- listening to what they were doing. And now I don't know the timing cause I'm just now, Oh, I think I'm done with, or just about done with season two of Supergirl. It's one of those that I have to, I can watch in parts, but there's an episode in that where um, I think it's a, there's a cop who doesn't know she's Supergirl. I think if I remember correctly, I can't remember who knows who her identity and who doesn't because it's, it's ridiculous how many people know. And she's talking about how the, some criminal just got off. So super, there's a, a, a standoff at a bank and Supergirl comes through the, the, the ceiling, crashes through, captures the two bad guys. No one gets injured, but there's damage done. And the two guys mm-hmm. end up walking in what they call the Supergirl defense. And she gets really defensive. And this is where I even made the comment on Twitter is, they, do they purposely keep her stupid? Uh, on the writing because she'll start to look like she's starting to understand and learn. And she's supposed to be a, you know, like 20 something woman, not a 13 year old girl. And then the next episode, she's, it's like, she took the, the dumb blonde pills, all of them at once. And she doesn't, you know, have a care in the world. What anybody cares and doesn't, it's just like, wait a minute, we had all this growth. And now the next, literally the next episode, we're back to, I don't care. I'm going to punch whomever I want. And I see the same similar dichotomy here with with there in Civil War, and you know, based on the personalities, to me it was tough to understand the flip. But I didn't see Age of Ultron, and and some of that apparently happened in there. And then for him to defend Bucky as relentless as he did, uh, to me was completely out of character, a hundred percent. I know it's his friend, but 
I think he would pursue Bucky to try to get him to turn good, if you will, to you know, especially once he understood that he was being controlled. Um, so that whole thing that starts this that the civil war, if you will, just didn't. It didn't register with me as genuine. It didn't feel uh, earned, and um, it it didn't. It would be different, I think, if they had Captain. Well, I don't know if it would be different, but I would feel slightly different if Captain America was like, "Okay, I'm not registering, but I do agree we have to have some more guiding principles here," and um, mm. not so much. I don't know if, how that works. Right. So it, it's that's the only thing. Yeah. I don't know how something like that would work because, like, if we go, let's let. I mean, I know we can't really use a comic in this scenario because. Really, the Civil War begins with the X Men characters, not with the um, like what they did in the movie. That I would say, I don't know. Like it, 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 the one thing I will say about Civil War that I really took from it, even if it was unintentional or intentional, I don't know, was that there is a very like we especially now live in a very reactionary culture. As soon as something happens, we must act. It's not about, okay, hey, let's take some time and think about this. No, everything is like, we have to react immediately. As soon as there was an incident, uh, immediately, oh, hey, we have to do something. You guys have to register. It, it's like hearing a gun control debate, but this time, instead of guns, we're talking about superheroes. Because really, essentially, you can make the comparisons between the two. Right. It even happened in the comics. Um, and when I read the comic, I remember, if I remember correctly, in the first issue of that of the seven part, and I'm talking about like the extended, you know, like the additional stuff that was happening here and there. But in the um, seven issue series of the series, what happened was that they wanted Captain America to be the face of. I think they wanted him to be part of the face of the re- of the of the registry because he was a well trusted hero, and all of the others would fall in line. And he just basically said, "No, what you're asking of them is first of all, it's too much." These people should not be, uh, a lot of people do not expose their identities for reasons that are pretty obvious. Uh, And one of the people that does end up doing it actually does pay the price for it, and that's Spider-Man. And we know what happens and what eventually leads up to it and the bullshit that you may or may not enjoy afterwards that is one more day and all that other crap. Um, I don't know. I read the story. I thought it was okay. I don't think it was anything special. But it was a dumb reason to, you know, do what he did. Um, I digress. But that was the whole thing in the comic. In the movie, the way I interpret it as to why he reacted the way he did had more to do with the fact that he was essentially a living fossil and how everything he knew from his his time, when he was you know growing up, uh, his friends, his love interests, everything, it was all gone. And Bucky was the last remnant of that. He literally was the last person alive that was still around when he was growing up, the last person he bonded with. Peggy Carter was long dead. Now he had her semi-hot, um, what was it, granddaughter or something like that? Yeah, no, it was like her niece. niece. Sharon, Sharon, no, it was her niece, yeah. Sharon Carter. Yeah. Okay, so, so but still, semi-hot touch, nonetheless. Semi-hot. She can't touch her aunt's titties. Well, Captain America is, I mean, they are the same age. So you trying to break into a car there, Eric? No. <laughs> That's my job. Well, somebody's... Exactly. Me, me. Hey, Brian, I'm white. I don't break into cars. <laughs> no, that's his registered vehicle. Move <laughs> along now, son. Nothing to see here. Yeah, so where were we? We were talking about uh, Captain America fondling... Um, a- I mean... Uh, Captain America uh, fondling an old woman's tits. I don't think it would have been weird at that point. It really wouldn't have. Well, you do know that in the comics, uh, Cap and Sharon Carter, I think they had a son together. They hooked up. I I don't think they, I don't think they got married, but I think they named their son um, James after you know Bucky. Which sounds about right. Um, something that would have a captain would do. Like he he. He did overreact also in the comic in Civil War because when they were coming for him, he hijacked the um, he hijacked the um, the jet that was coming after him. Um, the good thing was that he didn't like crash it into like a bunch of um, you know, like he didn't crash land that um that jet. There was a pilot in there, of course. He 
made sure he landed in a secure location. I remember what I think it was like a senator or something like that, politician, when they were discussing it, was talking about like, oh, how, how, how Captain America of him, that he wouldn't cause any damage to an American, but, um, an American jet. He would make sure that the pilot landed safe and he took him out for a burger and fries afterwards. So, <laughs> you know, and, and again, and I wasn't really too much, uh, I wouldn't say I was too much into comic books, but I knew Captain America and I knew what he was like. You know, um, the whole uh, here, American hero archetype. And he well, just, cool. and that just sounded so much like him. The cool thing about like, Cap is, and I love the character, man, is he is, he is completely, pretty much 110%, man. He is probably the most unselfish character, you know, in Marvel canon. If you really think about it, I mean, yeah. he he's all about the mission. He's all about doing the right thing. Um, I guess that's kind of why I really enjoyed Civil War is because they kind of took him out of that box a little bit, you yeah. know. Because yeah, see, see, that's about, why I thought he was out of character. He yeah. was to a certain extent, and that's another reason why I love Civil War is because. No matter if you were on Team Stark or Team Cap, you could you could see their point of view, both their points of view, you know, and you yeah. could get behind either one because Tony, Tony's fucked so he's fucked so much so many things up because of his ego, but at the same time he's trying to do the right thing, and then you have Cap who's always trying to do the right thing, but at the same time, you know, he's got to understand that you know his friend killed people, whether it was his friend's intent or not, his friend was ultimately responsible for the death of you know a lot of people including tony's parents so you would think cap number one would have told him that from the get-go instead of keeping it a secret which is pretty fucked up yeah um i would go i would sort of um add on to that and make um address a few other things you want to talk about development like let's compare the comic to the movie uh obviously the things that can will be not even be addressed like I'm not even gonna bring the XMN into this no point um like the reasons why a lot of people sided more with Cap especially in the beginning of Civil War was because Tony Stark really was going into that level of being such an asshole uh -huh. like, you know you know even using villains um as a Thunderbolts to um and, you know to capture rogue heroes that just didn't want to register because by law, they were now considered criminals. It didn't matter if the hero did anything wrong, but the fact that he was unregistered already made him a criminal. Um, uh, damn it. Give me a second. Hold on. Well, 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 he's busy making himself a taco, I'll, I'll interject. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I really, you know, said, you know, I'm a huge <laughs> fan. I really enjoyed the no, movies. That was completely um, coincidental. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, I like the first movie. The second, the second movie, the Winter Soldier, I really enjoyed. Uh, there were parts that I didn't like, but for the most part, I, I liked what they what they did with trying to take him and put him in the new world to see how out of touch he was. You know, that was kind of interesting. And then when Civil War came around. You know, it was less about Captain America and more of kind of a semi-Avengers movie almost. But I really enjoyed how they took parts from the comic book series, you know, Civil War, and pitted Tony against, uh, you know, against Cap. And, you know, I was on Team Cap, but I really enjoyed the back and forth between those characters and uh, how far each person was willing to go. You know, and I thought that was the best, the best part of the movie itself. But, you know, yeah. if I would have done it, I would have done things a little differently. I would have enjoyed to see uh, that former relationship with Sharon Carter and take that a little bit further. Um, I wish Peggy Carter would have been in more of, uh, um, of the Winter Soldier, even though I really did like the scene she was in. Because it definitely lent to, uh, you know, showing the, the softer side of Steve Rogers. But I understand, you know, that you know, they have to fit other things into the movies other than that shit, but... Yeah. I mean, you know, all in all... But all in all, you know, I, I thought the Captain America movies, I thought, were, were some of the better Marvel movies because they were a little different. Yes, they were they were formulaic, of course, as Brian says, you know. He's wrong, right? 
but I thought that they were a little more adult than the other movies. There was a little more going on emotionally. Actually, I when you put it that way, yeah, you're right. Um, it, you know how it goes, like from prog- progressively to me, the movies get better. Um, like the first one, I, I could watch it, but I, I'd probably get bored some way through it. It feels kind of campy in, at points to me, and it doesn't have like a certain realness factor, like where I can really get behind Cap. The time that I would really say in that first movie where I could really get behind Cap is anything related to him and Peggy Carter, because I would probably do anything she asked of me if, if I oh, knew it. God, and it's, yeah. Like, if, if, if that's the prize, I will do it for you'd, her. You'd like, eat yeah. the corn out of her shit if she asked you to. Uh, you know what? Um, I'm, I'm ready for <laughs> I wouldn't a go that far. I'm hard. sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> well, in, in the native Mexico, sometimes we have to do what we have to survive. <clears throat> that's one of them. But you know what, though? The first, the first Captain but, America movie... I enjoyed the first half of it. It kind of reminded me, I'm not saying it's that movie, but it kind of reminded me a little bit of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Like the first probably half of the movie. Because it kind of took me to another time period. But this, to me, the second half was really weak because Red Skull wasn't in enough of it. And I really didn't like their confrontation at the end. It was kind of, to me, it was kind of anticlimactic. Yeah. Because I like Red Skull a lot. And to me... They just didn't have enough of him in it. Yeah, and I, I do that. think at some point they are gonna they they are gonna bring him back in one of these in one of these two new movies. Red Skull is gonna show up again. Probably the fight Riri Williams. Yeah, Riri Williams. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I yeah. I can I can kind of see that it did to me the the Captain America was it 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 took too long to do the origin section. And then they kind of got into the okay, we have a bad guy, because um, like you know after they had him and they was doing some things and they were doing the 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 tour the bond you know the war bonds tours and all that other crap. I was just mm-hmm. like, uh, yeah, this this is just so stereotypical. And then someone it was almost like the writers went, oh crap, we have a villain we have to get rid of. Yeah, <laughs> you yep. know that's yeah. pretty much how it feels. Yeah, that's why. That's why I agree with um, Eric. Like, they're like, they're they're more yeah, more mature. Yeah. Um, with two, for example, like this is this is where we could definitely see a, a shift of where two. And I remember watching two. I was like, holy shit, that, that was amazing. And we were discussing it with I was discussing it um, at my then job with a coworker, and he was talking about how amazing it was. Everything it was going back and forth. But um, one of the things that we talked about is how two was a dramatic shift from where Cap essentially was a bit of in his comfort zone. Like, you know, he, like the world he grew up in, um, getting to meet people, being friends with Bucky, meeting um, meeting Carter, went into Bone Carter, picking up the field. Like he, he's, he's filling his new role, right? And it's like, he has a very positive outlook for the future. Like, we're gonna, we're gonna win this war, I'm gonna come back to her, I'm gonna grow old with her and have children, die together, that sort of thing. Very hopeful, very optimistic. And it ends with him realizing he's in a new world and he doesn't know what's going on. Everything has changed. That carries over into the second movie. And what also carries over into the second movie is how he is trying to adjust to his new environment, you know, trying to live in it. Um, But at the same time, the world that he once knew, uh, especially with relation to Bucky and um, Peggy Carter, remnants of his past, they are slowly, they have either slowly faded away or, or slowly fading away. Where in Bucky's case, they're yeah. not the same person they, he remembers. Now he doesn't it's know. It's a whole man out of time. Uh, a man out yeah. of time thing, you know. And then to go a step further, he also has to deal with a government that's very corrupt. Something that he probably wasn't used to. The fact that even the people that he's supposed to be trusting and putting his faith in aren't to be trusted. And that even within his own ranks... There are people that are going to overthrow everything. Um, what was in the scene with him and um, Widow when they went to um, what was the guy's name? The scientist from the first movie, the fat guy with the glasses. I'm trying, oh I'm yeah, yeah. Uh, what are you talking about? He was awesome, dude. Yeah. Oh, he, he was, was great. The computer. Especially the computer. But remember how he kind of brought like he's like, oh, Hydra never died. We infiltrate. We infiltrated the ranks. 
and we even um control everything you think you know already like reminding him of like remember that past that you think you knew well guess what it's nothing like you rem ever remember it because we even infiltrated it then and you know that's the first glimpses we get about like how they 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 had targets that they took care of including um if i remember correctly i believe that's where we had the first instance of them referring to um howard stark's death howard stark and, yeah. Please. Yeah, they did, right? And that would carry over into the third movie, which is basically Captain realizing that not only has what he once knew was different, and he didn't even know what to believe of his own time, of his own time, like when he was growing up back during World War II, but also that this time now is kind of pretty much fucked up. Like things are not making sense to him. And what are the last remnants of his past? Peggy Carter's dead. Uh, she's long gone. You know, the same optimism that he once had was pretty much died with her. Um, especially, you know, one and of the that's best what, in that's what pushed him. I'm sorry, but say that's what pushed him to stand his grounds against the Accords, and particularly his relationship with Bucky is losing her and knowing he could never be with her again. Whereas Bucky, yeah, he could save him. He could save that friendship, and he was going to exactly like he still wants to save. Like he, like he's so conflicted, he doesn't know what to do. Like he really. He is a conf like he's still basically a child. He's still a teenager trying to figure it all out, and he's maturing into adulthood. He really was robbed of so much of his own time, and now he's forced into a situation where he has to question his ideals and what he wants most out of life. Which is crazy because when we get that scene, you know that great okay. scene where him and Sharon, um, you know, start making out, and he looks to uh, Falcon and Bucky, and they're like just smiling at him. Kind of like tell, like assuring him, you know, Cap, just live a little, <laughs> just, just drop your guard a bit. You know, we see a different side of him, a side of him that probably shows a little more op optimism again. Well, so you know, you when we get that, he's epic. always he's so duty bound and honor bound. You know, he puts every everyone else above him in his own happiness. Exactly. That's why. He, that's why he's selfless. That's why he's Captain America. It's really hard when you watch these movies and you put like if you were to put yourself in Cap's situation, um, it would really be such a hard thing to try to like, like say what would you really do in that situation? I think if anything, Cap probably tried the best to handle it as best as he could, considering everything he has been brought up to believe and you know what he thought was you know the right thing to do. He did his very best. Like even at the end, like if we want to talk about the difference between the comic and the um. And the movie, towards the end, when they have the fight, when he has the fight with Tony Stark, we the difference, the reasons for why they have that fight, really came to a head when it was revealed that Bucky killed him. And you know, Bucky, for the most part, might have been hinting at it for the longest time, constantly referring to the screams. He's like, the screams, the screams. They won't let me. They won't let me sleep. I just can't do it. And you know, I was like, even Bucky's conflicted, and you know, he's a victim in all this, no matter. You, you can look at it as like, all right, he still killed, he committed the murders, he's still guilty, but at the same time, like, the poor guy was robbed of his life as well. Like, he was brainwashed into doing something he never wanted to do. And he's just really calling out, uh, crying out for help, and, like, nobody knows how to help him. Cap is, like, the only guy that really kind of understands him and is trying to find a way, but can't. Uh, and then when it's revealed that it was Tony, you know, that was Tony's parents, all of a sudden, it's like you see the expression on Cap's face, like, no, no, this can't be true. Like, it, it really dawns on him, like, you know, going back to that whole um, what he was brought up to believe, like, it's it conflicts again with his duty. Like, does he do the right thing? Does he turn in the murderer? If you look at it from Tony's eyes at that point, like he's just a murderer. Or does he try to save him in Cap's eyes as he would look at it, but he's the victim. So... That's really what I look at as the Civil War. The Civil War is Captain America. We could look at it as a Civil War amongst the Avengers, or we could look at it as a Civil War with captains, uh, like Captain America himself. Like, how does he feel about everything that's going on? He's still the prime. He's still the title character. He's still the prime character of the whole thing. And just like how he evolves as a character, dealing with these things and trying to figure things out. And remember, in the ending of the comic, he's about to kill Tony Stark. It's only when civilians hold him back and tell him not to do it that he realizes, damn, I went this far. Whereas in this movie, he had the opportunity to, to you know, lay a killing blow on Tony Stark. You could have argued self-defense or any way you look at it. It really, like, going back from the Civil War, it really depends on which perspective you're taking at this point. 
But he lays down the shield and just says, you know what, I'm not going to do it. And, you know, the rest is just from there. I don't know how you make what you think about the ending. But the way I look at it is just towards the end of the movie, Cap just basically did what he thought was the right thing to do. And can we really blame him for what he did? Yeah, I, I don't know. And, and Eric unfortunately dropped off in the middle of your conversation. He's home and he's got to put the kids to bed. But uh, yeah, no, it was good. It was good. It was, uh, and you know, my, my daughter's home and screaming about one of the puppies got into the puppy got into one of her Funko Pops. He only chewed the box, but the the the, uh, the things are still in the plastic around it. But um, and Overwatch I didn't get a one? chance, huh? The Overwatch one. Yeah, the one that I I actually put on on, on the um, the beer review, um, Mercy. Oh God damn it! How can you let the Swedish babe take the hit? Yeah, but uh, well, I was down here getting ready for the podcast, and I thought my wife was watching the the puppy, and I go upstairs, and she's in the bathroom talking to her mom, and the puppy's chewing on stuff happily, and he's not supposed to be chewing on. He's he's start, he's he's in the puppy phase, you know. He's chewing on bo- bo- books and all kinds of other crap. So, um, I've, like, I've I've been there. Now. Yeah, it's like you know, this is this is the stage. This is. Why you got to keep an eye on them? It's like having a child, you know, until they learn, okay, if I want to chew something, th- these toys I'm allowed to chew. This other stuff I'm not. But, uh, and, and I keep smelling something. I keep looking for poop, but I haven't found anything yet. But uh, I think the I think the, the older, one of the older dogs is underneath my desk, and I think he's got gas. So, you know, fun and excitement of being a dog owner. But, you know, I, I can see some of that, and, and I probably missed that because of the, of the um, you know, what I, I missed – I didn't see when the characters changed uh, and maybe some of that was in Ultron. I think some of that was in between those movies. And uh, once those characters were so backwards from where they had been the last time I saw them, I got too far out of the movie. And, but I, I, yeah, when he's got the shield and he's beating the crap out of Stark, yeah, he could have literally taken his head off and he pulls back and he doesn't. Um, I, I thought it was a bit, to me, it was a bit of a cop out to have uh, uh, Bucky. He was reprogrammed by the Russians or something, right? If I remember correctly, because aren't they supposed to be out in Russia or so, like Siberia somewhere? Um, yeah, the one time they actually uh, hacked something um, in the United States, yeah, or from the United right. States, right? And I think it would have been better if it was more um, some kind of remnant of of Hydra somewhere, or an offshoot of Hydra, or a you know, a splitter, you know, a splitter faction that was e- wanting to be even more extreme. Um, but what also I didn't well, buy was that they, you know, had this guy around for 40 years doing not a whole lot of anything. Um, and it's still when and it's in the I think it's even in in one of the trailers, but one of the little lines that and I think it's the way she says the line when um, Black Widow tells Captain, you know, they call him the Winter Soldier just the way she says that it just is so i, I don't know it's it it does it's it's so comical is the word i wouldn't use but it's i know it's a comic book movie but it just does it's like man that is just a lame name it just it just breeds lameness and uh at, that to me is where at that point i've now become so out of the movie and that's so early that the rest of it just becomes a, a car chase. You know, it's, okay, so it's, li- you it's a literally a car chase for an hour and a half and I'm done five minutes into it. Okay. So let me ask you this. Um, okay. I talk about names that are ridiculous. Uh, where do you compare winter soldier to taser face? I don't even know who taser face is. Damn it. I think that was his name from guardians of the galaxy too. I'm only halfway through Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and... Oh, shit, you haven't seen that scene yet. <laughs> no, I, I'm a, I'm, I, I stopped when uh, Kurt Russell took him to his planet. And, of course, immediately, as is, you know, they did the same thing in Doctor Strange, um, we immediately learned that he's got a dark secret and he's keeping someone there against his, his will. And that's when I was like, you know, I've seen this trope now at least three other times in these Marvel movies, I don't need to watch it again. 
and I stopped it. I actually had to do something and I haven't been back to it. I have not been able to get enough energy to sit down and watch the rest of it. And that's my point. This is what I've been griping on for several years now with the Marvel movies. There's so many of them. They're so copycat. They're cut and paste. They, they copy paste and they just change a few names. I mean, it's as bad for me as the force awakens is a copy of a new hope. And okay. I, I'm like, Oh, I see this movie already. And the problem is that's like in the first 10, 15 minutes and I got two hours to go and I'm probably missing something as you're describing, but it's, mm. and, and it's, and part of it is by my nature of, of who I am. This is why I'm a developer, right? Is I'm, I think critically constantly. I do not have to try to put, pull something apart. Things in order for me to uh, to remember and segment, I have to segment the memory. So things come in, and I am constantly chopping them up into parts. I'm sometimes rearranging the um, the uh, not sometimes. I'm constantly also rearranging the associations. I'm removing things around. This is part of why when I look at the Last Jedi, I don't even have to watch the movie to know how intellectual it wants to be, but it isn't, and. Because it's it tries too hard. It's the intellectualness is in the subtlety of the expression, and when I see this and I'm like, well, wait a minute, I've already got three movies that fit into this category. This part's already been done. This has been done. Oh my goodness, this is a rerun. I stop processing, and so if I'm not if I stop processing input, I can't enjoy it. It, I, it is not. Oh, okay. You know, I'm actually interested in the book that that Jeff is hawking right now. The, was it the problem with the uh, IQ? What, what did he call it? Uh, the high, like that. Yeah. Yeah, because actually, that, that sounds like an interesting book to read. Um, I'm con- I may consider myself too. Mm-hmm. I know I have a little bit of an ADD thing with reading nowadays. Um, mostly in part to the fact that every job I work at is just feeding into it. But it sounds like something that would be worth a read, even if at a quick one at that. Right. It's and I'll look at it again, but that that you know my problem is, and this is this is why like when I've tried businesses and things, why I've failed at stuff because sometimes for marketing you can't analyze it that way, and to turn that off takes a great deal of energy. And tell me about it. So I have to have a certain level of intellectual engagement, even in a movie that's supposed to be a fun popcorn flick for me to yeah. this is why I can watch the Holy Grail by uh, by Monty Python because it's it has in essence some just silliness just to watch but it's satirical it's ironic there there are things that flow through the movie it, you know it's it um, kind of uh, granted you know it's you know, I don't know when that movie came out in the late 60s early 70s I don't remember now but but that that's part of what's there. And the original Star Wars movies were not just escapism. They had uh, connections to grander and greater um, mythos that was kind of a part of Western civilization. And things like that, you know, these connections I see. And when things don't connect well, it's tough for me to enjoy, just turn my brain off, enjoy it. That is, I can do it. But it takes a lot of energy, and if the movie also requires a lot of energy to enjoy at the same time, then it's not possible. And that's why a lot of I've had friends who are like, "You don't like anything." I mean, some former coworkers of mine uh, used to call you know, "Mr. Hate everything," and it isn't that I hate it; it's just the, the amount of energy I have to expel to enjoy it has to be. It, that means the enjoyment has to be very high, or I expel a lot of energy, and I get very little in return, and that is a very big frustration. Well, the way I look at it, um, I know I'm in a similar boat with you with this because I remember when I I went to watch Suicide Squad, and I I I was utter garbage. I don't care how hot you want to tell me Marco Robbie was, I could give two shits because Harley Quinn really was never one of my favorite characters. If anything, I've always found her very annoying. Um, especially because of the voice. Uh, like, listen, it, uh, it, Fran Drescher's voice is pretty up there on the annoyance factor, but it's much more tolerable than Harley Quinn's. Um, just Or Sofia Vergata speaking English in a loud accent can be more tolerable, just to throw that out there. 
But um, I remember, um, and, I, and and it also was part of like who was the people I went with. It was mostly uh, cousins of mine, young cousins. My brother is old um, old enough that me and him could go to certain movies and enjoy it. But there's an age difference of seven years, and you know he's into different music that I was into. Um, I, I was more of a gamer. He's more into like athletics and sports and stuff. Uh, younger cousin of mine is like a lot younger. He's like in like 16. So you know it's like different generations, different likes, different things. So they're always looking at me, and then other people, even on my own age, even said the same thing. Like you look like you hate everything, and it's not that I hate everything. It's just that everything I like, especially when it, they, they came out or when I was introduced introduced to them, they were like the best shit ever. Uh, it could have been good, it could have been bad, but the way they entertained was very, you know, it was very well done. It didn't make. It, it's like when we had the conversation with Loudy. Uh, for like about an hour about wrestling. I know he was bored to death with the wrestling topic, and I always bring it up a lot. But there's a reason why. You know, remember when, you know, we always keep talking, we always mention like, you know, the days of Hogan, the days of Macho Warrior. These guys made it feel like this was actually more than just a show. They made it feel real life, and, you know, that carried on to like mainstream. It, it's, it's like the opposite nowadays where it's trying to be the mainstream, but it's not succeeding. It's, if anything, being the trend follower instead of a trendsetter. So you kind of get that with entertainment nowadays where instead of being the trendsetter, they're just being trend followers. They're just following the same trends over and over again, which is probably why you feel like a lot of these Marvel movies are pretty cut and paste because based on what you told me about Doctor Strange, it sounds like that. I, I haven't even seen Doctor Strange yet, but it sounds just like that. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure if I were to watch it, I could see the similarities now uh, based on that. Um, one of the reasons why I keep, uh, like, as much as I think a Civil War is a great movie, I will say that it's not my favorite movie um, of the modern day Marvel movies. You already know what my favorite Marvel movie is, even though it's not the Marvel Studios one. It still has the Marvel title. And I'm talking about the recent stuff, not like the stuff from Spider Man 1, 2, 1 or 2. I'm talking about now is Logan. And part of the reason is because. It's not your typical superhero movie. In fact, it's not really much of a superhero movie in the traditional sense. It's more of the story of a man that is just beaten, withered, done with life. Like, he doesn't want to move on anymore. And yet he is like, like, part of him just says, I still need to do what I need to do in the end, even after all else goes to shit for him. And even the way it ends, it doesn't end on the high note. It doesn't end on a safe note. It doesn't end on something that is pleasing to the audience. It ends with the bitter truth that, you know, every story at some point has an end. And it just so happened for that character and that actor portraying that character, that was that end. It wasn't like, oh, these other movies were going to set up for a sequel. No. Story is done here. That's it. There ain't no after. It was even no after end credits when I went to see it. I remember staying there and it was like, Oh shit! They 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 really did it. They they really told us it's over. Don't even stay for the credits. It's done. And it was a pretty big deal. Uh, this is why I love, love the movie so much. I've seen it three times. I bought the Blu-ray. I even watched the Noir version, which is the black and white version for anybody who doesn't know what that is. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Watching it a third time in that format. Holy hell! You talk about a movie that really changed my perspective on uh, life and understanding that we even the most strongest of us are mortal and our day will come one day for all, any of us so they did a noir um, version of logan yeah there's uh if you buy the blu-ray version there's a version it says the noir which oh. is basically huh. literally just black and white yeah well yeah it's, it's and, a little more than black and white but i mean the noir was done in black and white but there was a there's certain camera angles and other features about the noir film genre that i play into it um Sin it's City was, was done in that thing. light, too. Yeah, that, that was more, more of, I would say, the Noir style. I wouldn't say that Logan didn't do it a little bit, but it just kind of pretty much felt like it was just a black and white of the actual movie. Yeah, Well, but even with the black and white, you get a different tone, you get different emotions in different scenes, too, so that can that can help. Exactly. No, it definitely did. That's why I said, like, if you, I watched it. I really enjoyed it in black and white. That's even after watching the movie twice before that, All one right. in theaters and one in the Blu-ray. Yeah, I but that's because it was like I still haven't different. seen that. I really need to to do that. So, um, 
it's the best of the of the Wolverine trilogy, hands down. Like the other two, don't touch it. I tried watching um, the second one. I could not get past the beginning. It was just so boring. Yeah. Uh, I was like, damn it! If I can't get past these like fifteen minutes without falling asleep, I'm just gonna say fuck it. It's it's not even worth my time. Yeah. None of this. Oh, you gotta watch it to to understand them. We fuck it. If I can't stay past fifteen minutes awake to watch it. I'm not even going to bother. That's my yeah. opinion and my take on it. Yeah. And, um, and well, and, and here's an interesting uh, kind of taken off of that. Like my son asked me even today or yesterday, how come I like Batman v Superman, the ultimate edition, which is the one I've, I've the only one I've seen over some of the other Marvel stuff. And again, I said, it's because it's more um, cerebric, right? It's, I don't have to turn my brain off for so long to just uh, and quote unquote enjoy the fighting. There's a lot of mental, you know. There's there's the a lot of the the things are are mental, um, you know, uh, struggling with ideas of morality and um, duty and you know who's more correct, and the fighting is is not as necessary. Now I will say once. Um, whatever that stupid creature shows up is that doomsday yeah uh, then it just gets stupid but until then um i actually i wouldn't say i enjoyed it i didn't un- unlike it <laughs> put it that way or dislike it but uh okay. but if when you have a you know this is part of what the new movie the way jeff describes it you know it's you know, almost three hours long and it's you know fast paced and it's well it sounds like it's a lot of fighting well yeah i'm gonna be bored I'm going to be, I I can probably sleep through this movie because the mental stimulation is gone and the amount of energy I have to expend to turn everything off so that I can just sort of enjoy it. uh, It's going to be three hours. It's way too long. Hour and a half, it probably isn't so bad, but if I have to turn my brain off for almost three hours, there's no way I can enjoy this movie. I may be able to enjoy it in chunks and watch it and take two or three sittings to watch it um, and it's only and if I if I watch it impaired in any way, it's only going to get worse, because then the only part of my brain that does work is the very highly critical and highly analytical section of my mind, and uh, this is why uh, my poetry is better when I'm in such a state. Um, why I'll even contemplate calculus sometimes after my beer reviews, and I've I've started finishing off several beers, and I'm sitting here and I've edited some things. Next thing I know, I'm looking up, you know, differential equations and looking up uh, computational theories and trying to remember what push down atomic was because this is all the stuff that comes that I've suppressed all the time that just suddenly pops into my head because I don't, you know, my job I don't deal in theoretical computer science. So when uh, those uh, filters are suppressed. This is the stuff that I went to school for. This is the stuff that excited me the most when I was doing it. And this is stuff that comes out and I can't turn it off because my, my, uh, my energy level is such that uh, I can't filter those, those voices, if you will, out. And it just drives me nuts. And I can't sleep. I have to then look up stuff and read you know pages upon pages of Wikipedia stuff and find... Uh, you know, the, other, the other day I did this. I, I had to find... Um, uh, linear algebra uh, problems because last Saturday we were out uh, we went to Shawnee State uh, in t- for to visit and I was talking to some of the guys that were in the um, the pro the, they're on the comp- the programmer side of the uh, game design degree that you can get and it's and it's it's almost like a computer science minor somewhere between a major and a minor it's not quite a full computer science major but it's a little bit more than a minor uh, one guy was getting a math yeah. minor and we're we're talking you know, linear algebra, we're talking um, some computational theory and all this stuff, and I put it, you know, and then I drive home. Well, I can't remember if it was Saturday or Sunday. At some point, I was getting really tired. I was up too late. That part of my brain was, the filters side was shutting down. And the next thing I know, I spent the next two hours finding and solving linear algebra problems, some of which I posted onto Facebook. So, you know... So that uh, maybe that'll give it, uh, people oh, an idea, right? So, so maybe we'll, you know maybe this will help people understand why I can't enjoy long popcorn flicks. Now, when I was much younger, and before I got into some of this stuff, so we're talking say before 
you know, sophomore, junior year of high school when I started to get into higher math, I could because my brain was analytical, but it wasn't processing some of this other stuff that was a bit more fascinating. And I could watch a Sinbad flick and I could watch, you know, some silly matinee uh, or whatever. And, but once, and, and I, and I, you know, I took some higher English classes too, uh, although those really were tiring and I had to switch my senior year. But those same skills would start to develop. And the next thing I know, once I learned how to not just pull apart a sentence and find the subject and the adjectives and all that other crap, but see the hidden meanings and stuff and, and see the layers and see how things connected with other sentences and other uh, pieces, I would just read stuff. And without even thinking about it, I'm circling things, I'm making arrows back to others, I'm writing notes, of, you know, this refers to this, this refers to that. And it almost became like a subconscious, like I wasn't even aware that I was doing it. And uh, so when you put all that level analytical um, mindset, many times it is difficult for me to turn all that off for so long to enjoy something. And it is frustrating because there are times my wife will say, can you just enjoy something just to enjoy it? Sometimes I can. And quite often I can't. Uh, I mean, if, if, we, if we're going to go if we're going to go on that route, then no woman should ever oppose anal. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, ladies, uh, you just open. If you use that argument, you're opening that door. Don't even start. Uh, well, um, I'll ha- I, that isn't going to work, but l- yeah, let me know how that works not, out well, for first you. Of all, first of all, I don't want your wife like giving you a black guy, and then we have to figure out why you're getting all moody on Facebook. So we don't need that. <laughs> but um, but what I was going to say about like not enjoying, like it's not. In- Here's the thing: I don't think any of us really go with this active mindset. Uh, I'm not going to go enjoy this because I just don't want to enjoy it. Right. Because if that's the case, if something is good, then you're going to like it regardless of whether you and um, you thought it was objectively good or not. You'll see, okay, I enjoyed this, this, and this. Like, I've I made numerous references to movies that people dislike or think are terrible movies that I've found enjoyment in. I, I've always named a few of them, and they seem like odd choices to say, hey, I enjoyed it, for, but I'll tell you the reasons why. Hancock, that Will Smith movie, superhero movie nonetheless, too. Now that we're on topic, it's a really bad movie overall. Like it just like goes like it just doesn't start making sense like pretty early on. But it's just full of so many like funny moments that you can't help but enjoy this movie. It's like a walk in punchline and towards the end of it you're like, you know what, that that was an enjoyable movie. It was it was the worst thing I ever watched. But it's good in a way. Kinda like when you watch the room drunk with friends or something like that. <laughs> yeah, but see I like uh, Hancock. And not because it was funny. Yeah. I liked it because oh. it was a bit of a superhero movie turned upside down where you had, yeah. you know, their, their super weakness of these two is they were destructive to one another. Yeah. You know, which, which you like didn't know until what, two thirds the way through the movie, but I didn't even know it to the end. Right. Part of that, I think it, it took too long to get to that point. Um, it was a little bit too slow paced to understand, well, you know, why is this guy so destructive and always drunk? <laughs> you know, yeah, no, I can't I mean, remember his past, you, you know. He just remembers waking I mean, up in the sense. hospital. Yeah, yeah, it does. Like, I mean, like there are things that they had going in that movie that could have been good. Like, it could have been a much better movie, obviously. But like you said, like it, it turns a superhero movie in upside down, and in many ways, I think it became like an unintentional comedy. Like it wasn't really striving to be funny. Like it was striving to be serious, but then it came off funny. Um, I, I'd like to use another example of a more recent movie that I feel did the same thing was Ready Player One. Um, I'm not saying it's a terrible movie. I did say it was a decent movie. I will even go as far as saying, you know, maybe it is a lot better than I think of it. But when we get to the points of the movie where I'm like, wait, what's going on here? Like, I, I, I'm like losing myself something about big evil corporations and and you don't understand. I, I, I'm playing this game because I'm doing it for real life consequences. And, and then the LARPing scene I'm like, okay, I can't take this movie serious anymore. Like, it, 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 it really just became an unintentional comedy at this point, uh, with a message at the end about stop playing too many video games. Like, it, it, like to me, the best parts of the movie were when they went into the video game world, and it was like the actual journey. Like, this was much more interesting than listening to like, oh, we're doing this because there's an evil corporation and bent on taking over the world. It's like this was a 3D movie done right. Like, you know, the CGI and everything, just watching the 
uh, cameos when they weren't obnoxiously in your face. Uh, I'll say like a, a, a one of the better parts was like early on when they had the racetrack and they had the T-Rex from Jurassic Park and King Kong as obstacles. Like, yeah, you could tell what they were, but it wasn't like in your face bad where later on there were scenes where it was like, all right, let's let's throw in some references from the 80s to keep this train going. And it just became um, an episode of Ricky, uh, what was it, uh, Rick and Morty for me with this like pop culture reference every other scene like god damn it relax like just get back to the movie i don't need to like look up this pop culture reference that pop culture reference to enjoy this i just want to see a fucking good movie can you imagine like actually no i was gonna say can you imagine if that that happened in ghostbusters i realized that did happen with ghostbusters oh man i i just made myself sad but um again i still found it enjoyable i didn't say it was a bad movie so nobody getting all upset if you happen to like ready player one I did enjoy it. I just felt that there were flaws in it that made it from being the masterpiece it could have been. Um, and it and it, just what it is, is that sometimes, especially I would like to say in your situation is more of like, you've been around long enough that you've seen certain things already. You've already seen it implemented in other places that probably implemented better. Um, like if you want to talk about movies where they implemented uh, a level of like, hey, this is the big bad guy, and he's a pretty big deal type of dude. He could appear out of nowhere, he could have been built up slowly, but he's there, and you see it implemented much better in other movies. So it's like when these movies come around and it's like not implemented as effective, people who haven't seen it will think it's the greatest thing in the world, but people who haven't, uh, already have, excuse me, they're going to look at it and say, well, I've already seen this before. And it's called... Take your pick at that point. And, and I know which one you can, you if you want to toss the name right out there right now, this is the, the basically what the regular show is about. Star Wars, like, you've seen it already. You've seen it done in another movie before and a lot better. Hell, and that was on, like, the first try? Come on. So that's the way I look at it. And, you know, for people who say you just can't get an enjoyment and everything, why do you hate everything? I'll, I'll say to these people the following. Okay, so if you find enjoyment in this, I'm going to give you something that you're that I enjoy and I want you to tell me and I and I want you to keep the same standards that you keep in with me wanting to enjoy what you enjoy. And you're going to notice that that's not how it works. You can't just tell people all oh, hey, enjoy something just to enjoy it, because at the end of the day, then that's going to make us hive minded sheep. And that's the last thing you want in entertainment. All you want is a bunch of um, people who are just enjoying something because people tell them to enjoy it. You know, it's it's similar to like an experience I had today with this WWE greatest pay per view event. Like I wanted people uh, to not tell me anything about it because I wanted to watch it on my own and see for myself. It was is it a show worth watching? Uh, people kept spoiling it for me, and other people kept acting how good it was into it. I just made a joke, a remark about how I'm an idiot for constantly watching something I really don't like anymore. Some people took it offensively thinking I was saying they were stupid. I'm like, no, it's me because I know better that it sucks and I still watch it anyways. Why do it? Oh, well, Loudy said it best. I'm programmed into it. So sadly, this Mexican does not have a will of his own. But that's entertainment in a nutshell for us these days. And um, I just think the people who want to keep throwing that your way or my way are just the people who really haven't really gotten to know what we know. Like they're they're still not, you know, like we we you you throw a movie from sometime that you've you've watched in your life and tell them, hey, check this out. And some of them are gonna be like, Well, I don't need to check it out, but because it's the modern day thing and it's the trendy thing. Of course they're going to be into it. You think there's Marvel movies, you think a lot of these people actually give a damn about a lot of these characters? They probably never did. But because it became the trendy thing, all of a sudden everybody's a comic book fan. And this is where I keep throwing that weebooism term, basically to describe people who want to act like they've been fans their whole life, but really aren't. So uh, that's basically it. That's all I had to say about that remark. I know I went on for a long time and maybe your dogs probably fell asleep on me. Yeah, you caught me typing mid-sentence, yeah. 
No, that they're my wife took them out. So let's wrap this up, man. It's getting late. Uh, we, got, we got a late start. We should have been done quite a while ago. Um, we've been going for almost an hour and a half. So uh, you got any uh, other closing thoughts before we give the BBC? Um, all I want to know is where's the BBC from? BBC is from Japan, where she is a model. Sweet God Almighty. So that's the one I sent out. Harumi Nimoto is uh, my guess to how to say her name. She's uh, 37. She's born uh, 12 years and one month to the day uh, after me. <laughs> so July 28th, 1980. All I know is uh, hot Japanese women with a large rack. Listen, I'd be married. I'd be willing to marry that woman right the fuck now. I don't know what I would have to offer her. Um, maybe my, um, maybe I would have to get my citizenship papers or something. But damn it, um, I'm, I'm liking what I see. And um, Japan, please export a few more. Yep. Uh, she's five five. Interesting enough, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna make a. Uh, you know, Joel's been posting some stuff uh, with. You know, I think there's one like it says like bed wet or dead or something like that. I'm gonna put mine as stay lay or slay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put together one with her and probably some of our other BBCs and just go through them. Maybe I'll do that. Troll the the news the group a little bit. Or I could actually you know I take that back. I'm gonna I know what I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm gonna tell you off air. So uh, oh. anyway, well congratulations, uh, Nimado Harumi. Or Harumi Nimado, uh, I'm not sure which name goes first or last. And her Wikipedia page, it's listed both ways. Uh, I'm guessing Harumi is her first name and Nimado is her second, her last name. That's why, because in Japan they do it the other way around. Uh, she is the really? BBC of this week. And so check her out and, uh, you know, see what you think. She does a lot of uh, magazines and stuff like that. So anyway, she was in a DVD called Surf Girl and also one called X Body. So there you go. Hey. So I don't have any other closing thoughts. So let's get this. Uh, let's let's close it out and get the bumper music going and go home. So I have been your host, Brain Ruff and the Lifting Nerd. This has been episode thirty-six of the fan cast. We've discussed a lot of things, Avengers and a little bit of Star Wars, but mostly Avengers. And the last time we talked about Stan Lee for two for a long time. And with me was Eric Ward, who's gone home to feed his kids and. Look what all pros say goodbye. Uh, I got nothing. For $13 an hour, I did not inhale. <laughs> well. <laughs> all right. Good night.